In this video, we're going to be taking a look at SteamOS running on the Lenovo Legion Go. And this is official SteamOS. It's actually SteamOS 3.8. I've installed this on a few different handhelds. If you watch the channel, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We've tested it on the new Legion Go S, the ROG Ally X, and even the original ROG Ally with the Z1 non-extreme processor. But obviously in this video, we've got the Legion Go with it installed. And so far, it's actually working really well. There is a couple little issues that I'll talk about in just a bit, but I do want to get into the settings here to show you exactly what we've got. So moving down, you can see we've got SteamOS Hollow. It's 3.8. The newest kernel at the time of making this video that Valve offers right now. And of course, with the Legion Go, we've got the AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme. So we've got eight cores, 16 threads. This has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5X running at 7,500 megahertz. And that RDNA 3 based iGPU with 12 compute units. From the BIOS, I've gone in and dedicated eight gigs of VRAM. Both of the Legion buttons are working with this unit, so we can easily bring up our performance menu if we need it. Uh, this does not have a variable refresh rate display. Remember, this is an 8.8 inch, 144 hertz display. And you might notice that our TDP is completely missing from this menu. We do have iGPU control, but we can only go up to 1600 megahertz. But luckily, with the Legion Go and even the Legion Go S, we can actually adjust the TDP quite easily. If you check out the light up top here, Hold the left Legion button and press Y. There's actually four modes. Blue is going to be our quiet mode, so I think that's up to close to 12 watts. White is going to be balanced up to a 15 watt TDP. And then we move over to red and purple. Now with red, it seems to be about a 20, but I've seen it boost up to around 23 every once in a while. And purple, it might not look purple on camera, but that'll take us up to 35 watts. And again, that red and purple are a little all over the place. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but for sure, when we go to that white, we're going to be at a 15 watt TDP matching what the Steam Deck puts out. I'm a huge fan of the original Legion Go. I mean, we've got these detachable controllers and they do work here with SteamOS. And if you go into FPS mode, it's basically going to work like a mouse and keyboard, just like it would in Windows. Now, like I mentioned, there are a few things that are a bit off here. The trackpad, super slow. In desktop mode, we can actually set the acceleration to go up, but as soon as I go back to gaming mode, it kind of brings it back down. So it's not great to use in game mode, but Valve does have a beta coming up for other handhelds, and I'm sure a lot of this stuff is going to be fixed. But I've had a lot of people asking about official SteamOS on the Legion Go, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a video. Now, when it comes to performance, it's working just like it should. We're actually seeing some really good performance, even at that 15 watt TDP. And I wanted to face this off against the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally X at a 15 watt TDP. Now, the reason I'm sticking at 15 watts for these tests is because when it comes to the Steam Deck, that's all we can get up to. We can't bring it up any higher. And with both of these handhelds at a higher TDP, yeah, it's going to outperform the Steam Deck, no doubt. When it comes to the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, at 720p low settings, 15 watt TDP, you can see the Steam Deck OLED manages 58 FPS, the Ally X up to 64, and the Legion Go at 63. The Ally X and the Legion Go are really going to trade blows here, and if I ran this benchmark several times on each of these, it would probably come out to be around the exact same by the end. The Ally X and the Legion Go do have a lot in common. They've both got that AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme, and at that same TDP, I mean, they're right there next to each other. The main difference between the two, at least when it comes down to internal specs, is the Ally X does have more RAM. It's running at the same speed, but we've got 24 gigs there and 16 over on the Legion Go. But at these lower resolutions, it's not going to make a difference. Black Myth Wukong, 720p, FSR set to 60% with no frame generation. Even the Steam Deck OLED did really good here, coming in with an average of 49 FPS. The Ally X managed 55, and the Legion Go did beat it out by two frames at 57. And the final one we have here is Cyberpunk 2077. I've got all three of these devices on screen right now running that benchmark. Steam Deck over on the far left, we've got the Ally X in the middle, and the Legion Go over on the far right hand side. One thing I wanted to draw your attention to was total battery draw between these three devices. The internal screen on all three of these devices is set at 50% brightness for this benchmark. Steam Deck does jump up to around a total of 25 watts drawn from that battery. Ally X is sitting steady at around 23. 
but at the very end there you can see the Legion Go is drawn around 27 and I know it's got a bigger 8.8 inch display plus we've got those rechargeable controllers that are attached but I'm going to chalk it up to the system fan because it is spinning up higher than both of the other devices right now and I think with some tweaking from Valve you know when we get that beta they can bring this on down. But at the end of the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark, 720p, Steam Deck preset, the Steam Deck OLED came in with an average of 44, Ally X, 53, and the Legion Go, 52. So throughout, I mean, the Legion Go and the Ally X did trade blows. And again, if I ran these back to back, we could probably even out across the board. Now it's time to get into some gameplay here with the Legion Go, and I've just got this setup stationary using the detachable controllers. It did drop around 1.2 watts of battery draw with those detached, so that's something that definitely needs to be addressed in the future. Uh, they should be at 100% charge right now, but I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Either way, we've got The Witcher 3 here at 900p using that Steam Deck preset, 15 watt TDP, getting well over 60 FPS. And with all of these games, I mean, if we take the TDP up at least to a certain level, we will get better performance, but this is running great at 15 watts. Next up, we've got Street Fighter 6, and I'll tell you, it's really hard to play with these detachable controllers. I'm just not used to it, you know, being separated. 900p, medium, 15 watt TDP. It's running great, and I knew it would. I mean, the Z1 Extreme can handle this game just fine at 15 to 18, depending on your platform. So we did take a look at that Cyberpunk benchmark, but I wanted to get into some real world gameplay here. 900p, still using the Steam Deck preset, but now we're using Frame Gen, and we're at a 20 watt TDP. I'm gonna call this performance mode. We've got the light set to red up top, you know, using the uh, key combination to adjust the TDP. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that even at this 20 watt setting here, it does boost up over that. And in some cases, if you kind of add up the GPU and CPU wattage right now, it goes up to around 24 every once in a while. Next game we have here is Spider-Man 2, 720p medium settings with frame gen on. And with this one, it seemed to stay right there at 20, even sometimes under 20. It's kind of hard to gauge because, you know, the power draw is separated between the CPU and GPU. It's working properly here with the Z1 Extreme and the Legion Go. Either way, we're seeing some pretty decent performance here. We're over 60 only with frame gen on, and that's kind of how it is with the Z1 Extreme. But if I had to gauge or guess what kind of TDP this is at around 18 to 19 watts. Doom Eternal just performs really good here, 900p, 15 watt TDP. Even at low settings on this display, I mean, it does look really good. And yeah, I'm getting ready for Dark Ages here. I cannot wait to test it out on these handhelds. I've got a feeling, I mean, we're gonna see great performance out of that also. But with this set up at 15 watts, 900p low, we saw an average of 72 FPS and it's more than playable. With all of this stuff, I did use an unlocked frame rate. And really when it comes down to it, if you were to set this at 60 FPS, you could save some battery life because right now it does need to use a little more power to go over that 60. So keep that in mind. And the final one we have here is God of War Ragnarok. 1080p, low settings, FSR set to balance, frame gen on, 20 watt TDP. And the reason I'm actually running this at a 16 by nine aspect ratio versus the 16 by 10 aspect ratio of the display, I'm compiling a list here. And since a few of them that I've been testing only have a 16 by nine aspect ratio display, I wanted to keep it all kind of even there with that resolution. So yeah, this is actually super exciting to see official Steam OS running on the Legion Go. And of course, I mean, I've installed it on the Ally X and the original Ally. But Valve does have a beta coming up shortly. I'm not exactly sure when, but uh, we did get a little bit of information on it. That's going to be able to be installed on a lot of different devices. And with everything that I've tested so far, you know, using Steam OS 3.8, the way I've got it set up right now, 
I've got a lot of data that I want to compare once that's released. But yeah, this is actually working just fine on the Legion Go. And I personally want mine daily driving it just like it is. But I'm sure once that beta is released and more people start installing it on different handhelds, sending feedback to Valve, we will see better battery life and better performance out of all of these devices. But right now, I mean, this is on par with the Ally X, and I kind of suspected it would be. Same CPU, AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme. RAM here is running at the same speed, 7500. The big difference between the two, at least internal specs for performance, the Ally X has 24 gigs of RAM versus 16 over here. Plus, it's got an 80 watt hour battery, and we've been seeing some great runtime with SteamOS 3.8 installed on the Ally X. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I had a lot of people asking about this, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a video. And if there's any other handhelds on the market that you want to see SteamOS installed on, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.